Uh, the population has trem changed tremendously over the last 60 years and will continue to do so. I mean, the latest projections for, say, 2066 suggest that um, not only will the population increase by at least a third in the UK, so we're looking at maybe, I don't know, 82 million people instead of 60 million, uh, but that the structure of the population will change. So there are worries there about uh, increasing proportion of elderly people. So uh, if you look at the numbers of over 65s, they will increase by around 15% of the population to over a quarter of the entire population. And of course, they're the main consumers of health and social care. So one worry is, you know, can we afford to support those people? There'll be fewer, slightly fewer people in work generating wealth to pay for taxes and pay for the NHS. I think the, most of the research shows that it's not so much to do with the, the sheer numbers of, of elderly people, uh, but it's their so-called proximity to death. That's when most of us consume most of our health care and social care resources. So it goes back to then a question about how healthy are people uh, in the few years left of life. I suppose one of the, um, the, the favourite things for, for, for newspapers and the television and the media generally to do is, is to make comparisons between uh, the healthcare system in, the, in England and the UK and, and what goes on in France, what goes on in the United States and so on. These are, these are actually very difficult comparisons to make and it's, it's easy to sort of pick your facts to, to suit your argument here. I mean, uh, there, was a, um, there was a very big survey in the year 2000 by the World Health Organization uh, where they evaluated all 191 countries' health systems in the world and then ranked them. Uh, and the UK came 18th out of 191, which in one sense is not bad. In another sense, you could, you could argue, well, we're a rich country, surely we should be doing better than that. France came first. Though interestingly, if you talk to French health economists, they, they were very surprised that their health, uh, healthcare system came first. I mean, I think we do some things well, and that's what the WHO recognised. So we collect money from people to pay for health care in a pretty efficient and, and fair way. Uh, we have a pretty good uh, access, fair and equitable access to the health care system. Uh, our mental health and elderly services aren't bad. Uh, they're not brilliant, but certainly when you compare them with some other countries in Europe, they're certainly not bad. We've had difficulties with waiting times, uh, but then so too have many other countries, Spain, uh, Italy, Germany and so on. Um, so there's sort of you know, pluses and minuses on both sides. I mean, I suppose one of the most recent um, controversies in terms of international comparisons is about cancer survival rates. Uh, the UK have done pretty poorly across a range of different cancers in terms of the survival of people, uh, five-year survival of, from cancer. Uh, and we put a tremendous effort now into, into funding much more money into cancer. Uh, we've, we've changed the system so people get fast tracked through from GPs to hospital and so on. I mean, all these things have happened and we haven't got the statistics yet to test whether those have been picked up in terms of survival and so on. So that's something to look forward to or look for in the, in the future. There's not an awful lot of research on this, to be honest. I mean, I think the, the, the sort of conventional wisdom is that um, the public have become less deferential towards doctors and healthcare professionals generally, um, that people have become somehow more demanding and more consumerist in some way, treating healthcare not as a sort of uh, a largesse from the state, but as a sort of a, as a right, and they're much, as I say, much more demanding. But I have to say, if you go back to the, you know, when the NHS first opened its doors in 1948, you didn't see much holding back in terms of the sort of consumerist rush to get false teeth and spectacles and so on. Um, so I'm not, in, in some ways, I'm not sure attitudes from that point of view have changed that much. Uh, I think there's an expectation somehow that they have changed. And, I, you know, I guess the NHS, the, the public are more informed about, about healthcare matters. You know, there's, Many people have access to the internet and so on. It doesn't always provide the correct information, of course, but they, they feel more informed. Um, in terms of some other sorts of attitudes, in terms of, for example, attitudes towards the NHS itself rather than sort of doctors and nurses, um, I think uh, attitudes have, have remained remarkably stable. Um, the founding principles, as I've said, you know, uh, were based on equity of access and, and some inequity in, in financing, so the rich pay more than the poor. 
And still we see public surveys you know, today showing exactly the same sort of attitudes towards the NHS.